Hello, I'm Dr. Marianne Teitelbaum, and today we're going to talk about the birth control pill. Now, clinical experience counts for something. When you see over 100,000 patients over a 35-year span of a lifetime, many patterns start to emerge where you can see lots of causes and effects, even before the research bears them out. For example, it became apparent to me early on in my practice that people who cooked with vegetable oils like canola and sunflower oil usually developed a fatty liver, even without the use of alcohol. I never saw any research on this, but I saw it over and over again in my patients. And when I told them to eliminate the use of these oils and switch over to olive oil and ghee and gave them all kinds of herbs to heal their liver, the fatty liver usually totally reversed. <clears throat> I saw hundreds and hundreds of children develop food allergies and sensitivities from taking way too many antibiotics for recurring infections, and thankfully watched the allergies go away once we restored the friendly bacteria in the gut and settled down the hot and angry liver. I also noticed how my patients who had thyroid problems at the same time had problems with their gallbladder, which I described in great detail in my book called Healing the Thyroid with Ayurveda. Now, when you have a very sick patient staring at you on the treatment table, desperate for help, you don't have the luxury of waiting for research to discover what you've been seeing clinically for years. You just roll up your sleeves and you do what you instinctively know what you have to do, based on the experience you've gained from the other hundreds of patients who pre presented before them with the same symptoms. I remember many years ago, I began seeing problems emerge in our menopausal patients who were taking hormone replacement therapy, or HRT. It seemed that many of them were developing breast cancer. And it was a very obvious cause and effect that I saw over and over and over again. So I started telling women to avoid it. And I showed them how nature gave us a bounty of herbs that could help them overcome their menopausal symptoms without the side effects of the synthetic drugs. <clears throat> and then the Women's Health Initiative study which was sponsored by the National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute, found out what I had been seeing clinically. They tested 160,000 women over a span of several years and discovered that, indeed, taking the HRT did, in fact, increase the risk for not only breast cancer, but also for heart disease, strokes, blood clots, and urinary incontinence. Not by a little, but a lot. So much so, they had to stop the study in its tracks because the women who were in the group who were taking the HRT were dropping like flies, developing high rates of all of these problems. Thankfully, an alarm was sent out, and at least 50% of the women in the country stopped taking their HRT. And as predicted, the next year, the rate of breast cancer dropped dramatically, lower than it had ever dropped before, despite all the breast cancer research which had been done hoping to find a way to decrease the epidemic. And I remember at the time thinking that if we could only take it one step further, if they could somehow get the young girls off the birth control pill, we would see the rate of breast cancer go down even more dramatically. And again, I've come to this conclusion by seeing so many patients through the years who've developed breast cancer, they have one thing in common. A large majority of them have a history of taking birth control pills. And the longer they've remained on them, the more likely they are to develop it. This includes the patches, the vaginal rings, the IUDs, all of these are laced with the chemical hormones. So let's see why taking synthetic hormones might not be the way to go. First of all, the hormones that your body makes are highly intelligent. They're produced by the ovaries and are targeted to certain areas to exert their influence. They're then removed from the body and then new hormones are made. And all this happens through intelligent feedback loops originating in the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland. They sense when the hormones are low, signals are sent out to the ovaries to produce them, and they fluctuate up and down during a woman's monthly cycle, depending on this feedback loop. All of these functions can be altered immensely by synthetic hormones with grave consequences to your health. Why? Because these are not natural hormones, but instead they're the toxic synthetic versions of the hormones your body would naturally produce. And your body has never seen anything like this at any time in the history of mankind. While yes, they might be able to do a few things, 
that the hormones do, like attaching to your body's receptors, like your natural hormones do, kind of like a key fitting into a lock, but they won't necessarily open the door all the way. You'll definitely get a different outcome from these drugs than the intelligent hormones your body produces. In Ayurveda, we stress the importance of taking in truly natural remedies to heal the body. Remedies such as food, herbs, spices. These are all grown outside, absorbing the intelligent rays of the sun and the moon, which we collectively call prana. And it's this vibration of prana that gets into these remedies, which in turn impart an intelligent vibration and action in our cells, allowing the cells to perform all their hundreds of complex functions and also giving the cells the capability of communicating with each other. Every action inside of your cells runs on vibration, intelligent vibration, the healing vibration of nature. This is why we try to avoid synthetic vitamins, for example, as much as we can, because they too are lacking nature's healing energy. So when we take them into our bodies, yes, we'll get an effect, but over time we'll start to see side effects develop as their unintelligent or dumb effects begin to surface which is exactly what's wrong with these synthetic hormones, like the birth control pills. Not only are they not intelligent, but they also break a very important law of nature in that they stop the body's natural processes. This is also a very bad idea. For example, they stop the inherent and necessary rhythms of a woman's hormonal cycle, making her infertile by preventing the release of an egg during her monthly cycle. And they do this by suppressing the release of follicle-stimulating hormone, which is called FSH, and also luteinizing hormone, LH, from the pituitary gland. FSH and LH stimulate ovulation, which is the release of a mature egg from the female ovary. A woman cannot get pregnant if she doesn't ovulate because there's no egg to be fertilized. You know, I cringe when I think about someone stopping this very basic fundamental love, nature, inherent in all women, and the havoc that it must be wreaking on the delicately balanced endocrine system. The pill also thickens the mucus of the cervix. And this thicker mucus in the cervix blocks the sperm so they can't swim to the egg. Yet another cringeworthy thought. And I always tell my patients, don't stop any of the body's natural cycles so your body can run smoothly and intelligently with all the hundreds of functions happily taking place within the trillions of cells in your body. <clears throat> and it's almost like you get a slap from Mother Nature <clears throat> when you break these, break these basic laws of nature. This is because every cell is physically and energetically connected to each other. So a breakdown in communication in one area usually will initiate a cascade of events which will eventually affect the entire body. We can't expect to harm one area and things will be okay everywhere else. And this is especially true with synthetic hormone use. You don't want to remove the elegant hormones of your body and replace them with chemical toxins. If you do, then you must accept the reality of what might happen inside. They have been known to cause life-threatening blood clots, strokes, depression and suicidal thoughts. Some women develop high blood pressure, some develop osteoporosis, osteoarthritis, hardening of the arteries, heart disease, diabetes, insulin resistance, kidney disease, and even dementia. I make it a point to ask every new patient if they have ever taken birth control pills, or even worse, the morning after pill, which is higher doses than the pill and wreaks even more havoc. And if they've taken the birth control, I ask for how long, and then I ask how many morning after pills were taken. And this way I know the amount of toxicity I'm dealing with. Always keep this in mind. Estrogen makes things grow. The intelligent estrogen your body produces made your hips and breasts grow at puberty, for example. The unintelligent or dumb estrogen found in HRT and birth control pills creates dumb growth, growth such as cancerous breast tumors. Another pattern I've seen through the years is that the birth control pill destroys the friendly bacteria in the gut just like antibiotics do. And once these are destroyed, you can develop food allergies, yeast infections, irritable bowel, and autoimmune diseases. 
It's important to understand that the friendly bacteria in the gut prevent infection. They also help the digestion of the food and they keep the immune system stable so it doesn't spiral out of control and start reacting to foods or attacking your body, which will wind up in an autoimmune disease as your immune system starts attacking you. And birth control pills also wipe out the strains of the friendly bacteria in the bladder and the vaginal tract as well, causing recurring bladder infections and bacterial vaginosis. These infections don't occur out of the blue. They happen once the friendly bacteria are depleted. Since these beneficial bacteria prevent infections from growing, once they're depleted, you become prone to any one of these types of infections. And if you've been on the pill for any length of time, you must regrow the friendly bacteria in the gut, the vaginal tract, and the bladder using targeted types of probiotics for each specific area. Then you have to undergo an intense regimen of cleansing, cleaning the liver, the fat cells, the bone marrow, the blood, all the places where these fatty hormones deposit and they stay forever. And since these hormones are made out of cholesterol, there's a very good chance you need to thin out the bile and the gallbladder because the gallbladder has, no, has to process these fatty hormones out and continually dumping this much fat and cholesterol into your bile can overwhelm it, causing a condition known as bile sludge. See, normally the bile is thin and it flows like a liquid, but when too much fat is introduced into it, it becomes thick, like a toothpaste. So you need to thin out the bile using all kinds of herbs, foods, and teas before it becomes too thick and begins congealing into gallstones. This is why so many women on the pill develop gallbladder disease. Nip it in the bud before it's too late. Thin out the sludge before stones begin to form and get off the pill as quickly as you can. And finally, another pattern you'll see develop is that many women who have been on the birth control pill will start to develop problems with their thyroid gland. This can happen for several reasons. First, the birth control pill depletes both selenium and zinc, two nutrients that your thyroid needs to make the hormones and convert them into their active form. The pill also depletes the B vitamins. You know, I remember very early on in my practice taking the pulse of women who were on the pill, and I felt so sorry for them because I could feel their hands trembling and shaking as I took their pulse, which is a result of low B vitamins. And without B vitamins, you can't synthesize the thyroid hormones. And another huge reason the birth control pill upsets the thyroid function is because it increases something called thyroid binding globul globulin, which is called TBG. And what it does, it binds the thyroid hormone, making it unavailable to your cells, which isn't a great thing since your thyroid hormones affect every single cell in your body. So here's the way it works. Normally you make the thyroid hormone, but it circulates around in your body, kind of like it's sitting in a taxi cab, just cruising around your body until it's needed. The taxi cab is the thyroid binding globulin. So when the body sends signals that it needs more thyroid hormone, the thyroid hormone has to get out of the taxi cab and go into the cells where it's needed. This means it has to become unbound to the TBG, so it's free to go into the cell. When there's too much TBG, it's kind of like the thyroid can't, hormone can't get out of the cab, causing your body to suffer from lack of thyroid hormone. Don't pollute your body just like this, just for a few days out of the month that you're fertile. Use barrier methods of contraception, like condoms, both internal and external. There's diaphragms, cervical caps, sponges, or you can learn when you're ovulating and just refrain from sexual activities a few days before and a few days after ovulation because the sperm can live for a few days. Many women are put on the birth control pills uh, not to prevent a pregnancy but to treat acne or irregular menstrual cycles. Let me warn you about this as well. The only reason the birth control pill helps acne is because it stops the natural detox process of the skin. This is also not a very good idea. Your skin is the largest organ in the body whose primary function is to let toxins out through the pores all day, every day. So if you block this very important detox process, toxins turn around and go deeper into the physiology, causing worse problems in the future. And if your menstrual cycles are irregular, 
If you skip them or they come too frequently, then you should fix all the reasons that this is happening. Just taking the birth control pill gives you a false sense of security because now your period is coming on time every month. But the real truth is that none of the underlying causes for the irregular cycles are being addressed. The only reason you appear to be having a regular cycle is because you get what's called breakthrough bleeding every month when you stop the pill for that week. If you don't address all the underlying reasons for the irregular cycles, then these imbalances continue to fester within the body, causing a bigger problem in the future, especially when you decide you want to start a family of your own. So I hope you'll think twice before you decide to go on the birth control pill. Yes, it may be easy just to pop a pill each day to prevent a pregnancy, but the amount of toxicity it creates and the health problems associated with it aren't worth it. And if you're using it to prevent acne or balance out your irregular cycle, keep in mind that they are actually doing nothing to fix the underlying imbalances. All you're doing is sweeping the problem under the rug, creating much bigger health problems in the not too distant future. I hope this information keeps you away from the pill. I've seen way too many victims of the birth control pill through the years. Please, your health is the most important thing in your body. Don't throw it away so easily. Thank you.